Last year, we presented three possible scenarios as to how the pandemic can unfold and then we can finally declare that it's over. The fairy tale scenario was that we would reach that point by the end of last year. The optimistic one was that it's the end of 2021. And the pessimistic scenario was that the finish line would be way into 2022 or possibly 2023. I hate to say it, but it seems like the third version is going to become a reality. I'm Dr. Bertala Meshku, and you're watching The Medical Futurist. As we all get into brace position before the seemingly inevitable next wave arrives, let's take a look at what the end of this year could be like and where the pandemic is realistically heading. On average, the latest global vaccination rate is more than 34 million doses per day. At this pace, it would take another six months to cover 75% of the world's population. And that's still not close to the number required for herd immunity. As we head into the fall, with still fresh memories from last year, the question is obvious. With the Delta variant slowly taking over as the dominant strain, can we expect a resurgence as devastating as it was last year? To answer that, let's take a look at Israel, a country that has one of the world's highest levels of vaccination with 61% of its total population fully vaccinated, mainly with the Pfizer vaccine. Despite that, the country is now facing a steep surge of infections, in which more than half of the infected are vaccinated, Israel's experience underscores a few notions for the future. Out of all the infected, those who have severe or fatal sickness are mostly the unvaccinated. But it also seems clear that while the vaccine blunts the effects of COVID, the Delta variant proved to be extraordinarily transmissible and capable of circumventing lower levels of immunity. This also testifies to the fact that, at least for the Pfizer vaccine, immunity decreases with time. Initially, two doses of Pfizer's vaccine provided more than 95% protection against infection. But in a new report from Israel's health ministry, with time, that number has fallen to just 64%. Although I can't emphasize enough that the same report shows that even if you are being infected, the vaccine remained 93% effective in preventing hospitalization and serious illness. So basically, we are entering a point where a booster shot is a necessity and we have to learn that preventing the infection is not the marker for vaccine effectiveness, but preventing hospitalization is. And in that area, vaccines are still immensely effective and remain our only way out of the pandemic. As we head into the fall, I expect a lot of new cases among the unvaccinated. We will see masks and social distancing coming back in a big way with a new race on getting the booster shots out there. And I believe we will see country leaders getting tougher on those who refuse to get vaccinated. What I don't see happening though, is a full-blown lockdown like we had before. Just as a reminder, the pandemic only ends when the coronavirus becomes endemic, meaning it is regularly found among the vast majority of people. So far, over 220, 30 million people have got COVID. The rest will have to get it too. But it very much matters how they meet the virus. If they are vaccinated, they have an almost 100% chance of beating it like the seasonal flu. If they are not vaccinated, though, it's a blind bet. If people get seriously ill, they get hospitalized and the world shuts down again. If more and more are vaccinated, this won't happen. That's how simple it is. The jury is still out on which countries handle the pandemic right and which ones have not. New Zealand was very swift and tough with the lockdown. They only had 27 COVID-related deaths throughout the whole pandemic, yet herd immunity might not be reachable for them without a large amount of the population getting through the virus. On the other hand, there is Sweden, a country that didn't have any restrictions throughout this whole time, yet questions remain whether they were careless and had a huge number of excess deaths as a result. And then there is Israel that used to lead the world in vaccinations, mainly with the cutting-edge mRNA vaccines, yet the Delta variant was able to poke holes in their defense and it might have been better to use multiple types of vaccines to have a more diversely vaccinated population. The big question of course is that whether the Delta is a final attack on us that we need to beat 
Or is there a chance that another mutation will come that will completely nullify our vaccines? Now, I have to put some pressure on the unvaccinated people and say that the answer to this lies entirely on them. CDC Director Rochelle Walensky made a dire prediction that a new, more elusive variant could be just a few mutations away. The fact that the virus mutates is no surprise at all. That's natural selection. It gets a little more transmissible each time. But Delta was fascinating because of how much more infectious it turned out to be. And unfortunately, another big evolutionary step can be right on the corner. The more infections we allow to happen among our populace, the more likely changes will happen. That's why scientists and responsible politicians are pressuring the unvaccinated to get the jabs. We can give time and space for the virus to adapt to selective pressures, like how the Delta did. Let me be very clear on this. Most of the current vaccines are targeting the virus's spike protein. If that protein changes in a way that the vaccine is no longer able to bind and destroy the virus, many vaccines will be less effective and we will be back where we were last March, when this whole nightmare began. In conclusion, there is a huge number of unvaccinated people around the world and they are directly jeopardizing all our efforts to end the pandemic. The scientific world did something unparalleled with the vaccines. The speed and the effectiveness of this innovation is nothing short of a miracle. Look for the next Nobel Prize, right? Katalin Kariku? Yet, at the same time, we have failed in communication. People are terrified of what's in the vaccine, while at the same time they are happy to take horse medicine. And every day they put their trust in the hands of questionable influencers and bonkers Facebook posts. Dr. Anthony Fauci had to say it out loud that the COVID vaccine does not cause swollen testicles. Thank you, Nicki Minaj. Misinformation is blocking the road out of this mess and threatening the progress we have made. Once again, a new vaccine-resistant variant could be just a few mutations away. If the prediction that our fight against COVID could continue till 2023 scared you, imagine what happens if we have to start it all over again. Personally, I've received death threats and tons of vicious comments for my videos where I encourage people to get the jabs. But not everything is a conspiracy. Not everyone has an agenda. Or if so, my agenda is to get to the end of this nightmare and for all of us to be able to go back to our normal lives. That's it. This pandemic won't end overnight. While day by day we are getting to a better place, with time this whole thing is just going to be immensely more complicated new strains, a booster shot, and combined vaccines that bring the flu and the COVID jabs into a single dose are all on the horizon. We need to learn to put our faith in the hands of scientists, because they are the ones who can help us navigate this complex landscape in a responsible way. And we also need to be compassionate and kind. And I'm not addressing just those who are sending me death threats. Why those who are not willing to take the vaccine are jeopardizing our collective safety, they can have strong individual opinions for not doing so. Perhaps they heard some bad things, listened to the bad people, or due to prior experience, have some unfounded fears. Still, we can't bully our way to herd immunity. Just let me ask this question. If you do your own research about the COVID vaccines, why don't you do the same with bridges? Did architects design bridges in the right way? Because if not, and you walk over them, they might collapse and you die. What is the difference? Vaccines represent the hottest topic these days. Why not any other technology experts made for us? Why did vaccines suddenly become the threshold of questioning the wonders of civilization and the voice of experts? It's simple. We are living in an age of misinformation and out of all the crises that could have happened, a health-related one was the most susceptible to false beliefs. It's simply bad luck that at the peak of it, this current era, we had to fight the worst pandemic in a century. As I said, the scientific community pulled off a miracle with the fast development of the vaccines, but they lost sight of who they are making it for. They communicated toward their peers and in their own language, asking everyone else to have blind faith, while they left a lot to interpretation. And people did what they do these days best, argue and spin the truth. Hence, we are facing the third 
most pessimistic scenario. Covid is going to stay with us for a while, science has done its part and it's going to keep doing it, and we can find solace every day as we look around and see how much progress we have made since last year. And hopefully, at the end of this long fight, we will be able to learn the right lessons, and when the next crisis comes, we will be more ready. If you like this video, please leave a comment and subscribe below. Also, please don't forget to tap the notification bell, so you will get notified about all new videos. Thank you so much, in the name of the whole The Medical Futurist team.